Welcome back to the How to Trail Run series and in this episode it's how to pack your race vest for a long run or an ultra. Let's do it. the channel. Tomorrow is my final long training run before the Thames Path 100 with Centurion Running. Uh, I thought I would use this as an opportunity to um, take all the mandatory equipment and kit that they stipulate for the race um, and also show you what I'm going to be taking on a long training run as well as what I'll be packing for the race itself. So to start with I'll be using a Salomon 12 set advanced skin race vest. Um, I've been using this throughout my running career so far, it's about four years old and it's still going strong. Showing a little of signs of wear, but that'll be the race vest that I'm using. Um, so on the mandatory kit list um, that I'm going to be packing with me is a charged mobile phone. So I'll be having that fully charged and normally what I do is I put it inside a plastic bag just to protect it from any leakages, sweat or any rain that comes along. Uh, for my nutrition side, I'll be taking two uh, soft flasks and I'll be using Tailwind in each of these 500ml flasks. Tomorrow as well, I, I'll be using um, a bladder as well and I'll be taking about a litre worth of water with me. Um, I believe there's some water stops on the way that I can fill up. But during the race, I'll just be using two 500ml and then use the aid stations to top those up. Um, tomorrow as well, I'll be taking uh, three gels, three of which are the SIS Sport and Science uh, orange flavour and one goo um, in terms of gels. I'll also be taking um, some thins. I use these for the kids' sandwiches, but what I do, they're nice and thin. Um, I put some peanut butter and some honey on there, um, cling film them and you can stuff them in and that gives you a bit more of substance when you're eating and you can eat something a bit more solid out on the trails. Okay, so another requirement is a survival blanket. Uh, it needs to be 1.4 meters by two meters minimum. So that's what that is and that's inside protective case again. Um, alongside that, in terms of emergency kit, I always, always carry um, a bag that has some toilet paper. You never know when you're gonna get caught out. Um, a bandage wrap. Um, some what I call finger tape, uh, so hard tape in case you've got any cuts or blisters, um, some plasters themselves and as well as some compede. Um, alongside that as well obviously I'll have some body glide and I've got some other tape that I'll use before I go and this for me personally I, I put it on my, my nipples because otherwise I get a terrible rash. Uh, so that really life saves, that's, that's a good idea. Um, another mandatory item is the whistle. So on this tw Salomon 12 set, inside this top pocket here, you've got a little whistle, uh, so that qualifies as well. Uh, next on the list is a fully waterproof uh, jacket um, that needs to meet a minimum of 10,000 uh, mm hydrostatic head. Uh, so I've got this Innovate jacket, which uh, is fairly new, very lightweight, and what I'll be doing, the weather forecast for my training run tomorrow is um, quite sunny, so I won't, I'll be wearing it in the morning when it's cold, but then as it gets warmer, what I do is just, you can roll it right up, put it into the hood, or a lot of them you can stuff into the side pockets on the chest, and it comes down to that size, and then you can put it into the back of your um, race vest, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Next on the list is a primary source of light, 
So the Thames Path 100 or any ultra that may go into darkness requires you to have a form of light. I've got a Petzl Tika here. Um, it needs to meet a minimum of 75 lumens. This one is at least 125, so that'll be my primary source. And then you also have to have a backup. Uh, so I've got another older version, Petzl Tika. Um, that will be a backup source as well. Um, what I do like about this version is it's a rechargeable battery and then you can carry three AAA batteries as well as a backup just in case. But on this occasion, I'll be taking two head torches as that's the requirement. Other items of clothing that are required are a pair of gloves. I've just got a pair of Mountain Hardware warm gloves here. Um, inside here is a base layer and it needs to be inside a waterproof bag. So I've got a warm base layer. It needs to be kept dry for an emergency and you can't wear it at the beginning. So you can't wear a base layer and a t-shirt to start the race. In theory, that's obviously because the amount of sweat will soak it through and then you haven't got anything to put on in an emergency situation. So I'll be carrying that. Also, you need a warm hat or uh, a buff. Um, so I'll be just using a buff, uh, certainly tomorrow and as weather dictates on race day as well. So a buff is good for if it's hot to mop up the sweat, but also if it's cold to protect your head. The last piece of mandatory equipment is a cup. Um, a lot of races are cupless these days, so you need to be able to take your own. And this is my hot and cold container that I can take along, um, use it as I need to, folds up again, and then you can put the lid on and stuff it back into your pack. So that's a great piece of equipment as well. The last bits of technology that aren't a requirement, but obviously a lot of us will take along with us, is a watch. I'll be taking my Chorus Apex Pro. Um, the battery life on this is really great and I'm keen to see if it lasts the, the 100 mile race that I, I do in it. It's never faltered in any of the long training runs that I've done, so we'll see how that gets on tomorrow. Uh, and I always take a, a GPS device. I can get the routes on my watch, but I prefer to have a, a more detailed map um, and route selection on a GPS, and this is uh, the Garmin E-Trex 20X. Uh, so I tend to look at the GPX route in advance on get, uh, Garmin Basecamp, upload it to here, and then I can follow it. Um, and I also take a spare set of AA batteries, which this takes um, in case they run out. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing glasses. I need glasses to see, and on race day, I'll be wearing a pair of contact lenses. Um, what I tend to do is wear the pair of contact lenses. They normally last throughout. I can wear them for 24 hours. If I need to, I've always got a spare that I'll take with me. If something gets into my eye, a bit of dust blows up or anything happens, I can take them out and I've got a spare set there as well. Okay, so now we need to pack all of this, with the exception of the, the fluids, into the race vest. Okay, so from my experience, some of the things are easier to pack uh, before you put the pack on itself. And also prioritise what you're going to need and how you're going to access it, whether you want to take the pack off or whether you want to um, be able to access it on the move. So the items that I'm not going to need uh, particularly are the warm kit, um, depending on the weather. I know tomorrow is going to be nice. So what I'm going to do is take the base layer first and inside the zipped area, I'm going to pop that in there. I'm also going to take the emergency kit, so the blanket, toilet paper, the bandages and that sort of thing. And I'm going to put those on top of there as well. And on top, I'll just stuff in the gloves as well. Okay, so normally these will be front uh, and filled. With the bladder, what I'm going to do is, once it's all filled up, you've got a section in between the zip and the mesh and it's going to slide into there and it fits quite well and also cushions uh, your back against anything hard that may be in the back of your pack here. So the cup can go in the back section here along with the head torches. If you're not feeling that's too secure there are a couple of zip sections on the side here. I tend to put my uh, gels and sandwiches in there I'll put gels on one side, you can fit quite a lot in there. And then on the other side here, I will put my sandwiches when I have them. At the front are the things that I want to access the most. So normally I'll put this on, like that. I'll actually do it up. 
And then I will prepare my soft flasks with fluid. Magic, here they are, filled with fluid. Now, a lot of people make this look easy and it's not, and some people prefer to put their uh, flask in with the jacket off or on. Now, to make it comparison, this one is dry, but more likely when you fill it up at an aid station, it's gonna get all wet on the outside like this. And this is how a wet one goes in for me. It takes a bit of work. Depending on the seal at the top, it might squirt out. That's not too bad, that's fine. And a dry one, you have to remember to lift this section out on the salamon and then push it in and twist it slightly. Everyone has their own techniques. So actually the dry one, they go in about the same. So that's the flask on the top. Um, normally then I will have my phone because I like to take some photos, although I have the GoPro with me. That's just to protect it and that'll go in the side here. I won't be really using it that much. GPS, that stuff's into the side as well. I need to access that. Watch will obviously go <coughs> on me here. In the zip pocket up here, I'll normally put my car keys and my contacts, so things that I'm not gonna actually use. I'll have the watch on and the buff, depending on what I wanna do with it, I'll either have it on my wrist like this to wipe the sweat, or if it's really hot, I'll actually have it on as a bandana uh, and be able to use it. The other thing I forgot to mention was some body glide. We all know what that's for. Uh, it's normally applied before a run or a race, but it's worth taking with you as well. So, tomorrow morning, I know that I'm gonna start in the cold, probably the frost as well. So, I know that the weather's gonna be good, so I'll be starting like this. And something to consider when you're getting your, um, your jackets is if it fits over a fully packed um, race vest, because you don't know when you're gonna need it. So in this situation, it's gonna be running like this. I particularly don't care what I look like when I'm running. This protects me from all elements, keeps me warm, it's windproof, job done. As the day goes on and it gets a bit hotter, I'll take it off. Now I normally do this on the move, but equally it doesn't harm to stop for two seconds and do what I'm about to do. So I normally get it all together like this, roll it up as I showed you earlier. You can put it into the, the hood. And the reason I put it into the hood is you can really pack it in down. And then you can just stuff it straight into the back like that. It's also easily accessible to get out if you need it on the move and put it on again. So that's it. That is how I pack for my long runs. This particular occasion I'm taking a bit more. What I haven't got in here is my sandwiches but um, I'll fuel up as I go um, and we'll see how it goes. I hope that was helpful. I hope that was useful. Let me know if there's anything different that you do for your long run training runs or your race preparation um, and stick with it. Good luck. Thanks for watching.